Delay is my all-time favorite effect. I think if you would ask me uh, if I could use one pedal and a guitar and an amp uh, all day of the week, it would be delay. It's just so uh, interesting. You can be so creative with it. You can be so musical with it. You can sound um, really interesting. You can sound like you know two or three guitar players at the same time. It's just an awesome effect, and it's one that I would not want to do without. And today I'm gonna talk to you about the uh, triple delay by TC Electronic. It's the big blue box there that you see on my pedal board. Uh, it's just a really powerful delay. It's really easy to use. It sounds great. It's extremely flexible and uh, and you can do so much with it. What you heard there in the beginning was just the guitar and the amp and the delay. There was no reverb. I actually had to make sure my reverb was turned off <laughs> because it sounded so huge and so big. And uh, I was using two delays at the same time. I was using a quarter note delay and a dotted eighth note delay. And uh, we'll talk about those different sounds in a bit. But first of all, I'm playing today through the with the uh, Shelton Electric Instruments uh, Time Flight Custom. Awesome guitar, literally one of the best guitars I've ever played. Uh, we have a review of this guitar up on the site. Definitely check these guys out. And I'm also playing through the Agape Tribute 18 watt uh, head amp, which is a fantastic amp as well. And uh, like I said, the triple delay. So if you look at the front panel of this delay, you see four buttons. You've got delay one, two, three, and a tap tempo. And uh, the way this pedal is set up, it's really different than any other delay that I've ever seen. Uh, it has three completely different delay engines. Uh, it's like three completely different delay pedals all at once. So how it works is uh, you can see that big white knob there on the top left. Those are all your different delay sounds or algorithms. And uh, you can dial up any sound, any type of delay you want, any subdivision, and put it on delay one. Then you can do a completely different one on delay two a completely different one on delay three, and you can turn them all on and off independently. You can have them all going at the same time if you wanted to, and then you can tap them in so that they're all in sync. Quickly, I'll just show you how you can edit this. So let's go to delay number three, and it's using my favorite delay algorithm in the box, the space setting, which is based on the Roland Space Echo. Now in this demo, I'm not gonna try and wow you with my, uh, my playing. I'm not the right guy to do that. I am just gonna talk a little bit about how flexible and how powerful this pedal really is how great it sounds, and I'm gonna show you a few of the sounds that are in it. To edit one of these delays, I'm on delay three, it's on. You have this selector right here. You can do up is one, middle is two, down is three. So we're on delay three. Like I said, it's a space uh, delay and it's set at quarter note. And then you can adjust your, your time, which you can also tap in, your repeats and your mix. Repeats being how many times the delay repeats, the mix being how loud it is. So I'll just give you a little example of what this sounds like. Again, it's quarter note, but it sounds like this. So you can hear it has like this warble, like wow, wow. I love that. That is their recreation of the Roland Space Echo, which is just an iconic uh, pedal, very sought after, very expensive. And this is a very good sounding uh, version of that. It's probably, like I said, my favorite delay. It's like a kind of a modulated delay thing. But just a few of the other sounds. Uh, well, let's show you a little bit. You can kind of get infinite repeats. So if you turn this up. So you could hear that thing is just gonna go forever and ever. Uh, mix is how loud it's gonna be. So if you turn it down, obviously you don't get any delay sound. And as you turn it up. Okay, so that determines how loud the delay is in the mix. As you see, when you go all the way to the right, um, your original signal is still preserved but the delay signal comes in. Some delay pedals, if you turn the mix all the way to the right, your original sound goes away. It's like it goes to zero and it's, it mixes in all the delay sound. This one doesn't do that, at least on the space uh, setting. So let me play a few more of the sounds for you. We're just gonna look at quarter note delay settings. So this is the tape delay. The tape is one of my favorite. It has like this really natural uh, degradation in the sound and you'll see what I mean. Here's, a, here's just a single note. 
So you can see it gets really warm as it trails off, and when you play it, it sounds really nice and full. So you can see it makes the sound just really thick and uh, and full. Okay, the next one, the next one I want to show you is the analog sound, and it's going to sound a, a little bit like that tape delay, and that it's going to kind of roll off the high end on the repeats. But as you can hear, it's even a little warmer in my opinion. Uh, the tape is an emulation of an actual tape delay where the tape would kind of degrade as it keeps playing over and over. Uh, this is a little different. Sounds like this. Just a really nice, warm, uh, lush sound. Um, there are a lot of modulated sounds in the uh, in the triple delay. Here's the analog modulated sound. My guess is this is going to be a deluxe Memory Man kind of a thing uh, with modulation, or some kind of a Memory Man with modulation. Um, I think you can go to uh, TC's website and see what these pedals are based on, but it sounds like this. So you can hear the uh, the modulation in there on the repeats, and it sounds like this when you play it. I like modulated delay a lot. It really it makes your delay sound. It makes your whole sound feel a little bit wider um, because it is the modulation makes it give it gives it a sense of space, um, and it just really makes it sound lush. It's uh, it's great for ambient kind of stuff. Okay, reverse delay can be a lot of fun. Uh, it sounds kind of like this. That's pretty neat to have that kind of thing coming back into the sound. Um, in my opinion, reverse delay is really cool when you use it with another uh, non-reverse delay. And uh, obviously you can do this on this pedal. Now there are other pedals on the market, the, uh, the time factor, the timeline, for example, um, they have dual delay settings. I owned a timeline for a while, um, so I can say for sure that I know how this one, that one works. Uh, you can run two different delays at the same time, but they have to use the same algorithm or the same sound. So if you're on a tape delay, you can have two different delays, but they have to both be tape delays. Um, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit less flexible in that respect. On the triple delay, you can have a, a digital delay and a reverse delay if you want, and they can be completely different. It's really the only pedal that'll do that for you. So speaking of digital delay, uh, this has the, the TC2290 digital delay in it, which is an iconic delay that, di that TC, uh, the TC developed in-house themselves. It's a very sought after, very good sounding digital delay. And it sounds like this. So as you can hear, it's like a really pristine uh, recreation of the original tone. To me, it sounds like it's a little bit brighter than your original sound. Um, when you play it, it sounds like this. So what I love about the, the triple delay is you really get lots of different kinds of sounds. You get those really nice, warm, analog uh, tape type sounds, you get modulated sounds, and you get this really crisp and clean digital delay. They have a modulated version of that digital delay that sounds like this. You can notice as well, uh, there is no modulated dial or modulate kind of control. 
um, on the front panel of the uh, of the delay. So on these modulated sounds, what you get for the modulation is what TC has already sort of preset. Um, a lot of people have said that they would like to see a, a control where you can dial in less or more of that modulation or even change it a little bit. Um, and, and, and I can see where those, uh, those arguments are coming from. Um, sometimes less is more, though. I think that these sounds that they've come up with are, uh, are really good. I will say their modulated settings, especially that 2290 modulated, it sounds really cool, but it's a lot of modulation. There's not like a happy medium kind of between a lot and none. Um, but I think some of the other uh, settings are a little more subtle in their modulation, but, uh, but it would have been nice to see that dial on the front panel. But again, um, I think sometimes less is more, and I think simpler can be, can be easier to use. Uh, sometimes I think with, with pedals, with, uh, with anything really, you can get so caught up in tweaking the thing that you never actually just spend time being creative with the thing. And uh, I've, one thing I've noticed about this pedal in particular, as opposed to like my time factor, um, the time factor had all these parameters and dials on the front. It was a little intimidating. It actually took me a little while to learn. <laughs> um, and this one is just so easy. You can just set up three different sounds and put them all together and make them do really interesting things and really spend time being creative rather than diving into, uh, into different settings and, and everything like that. But if you wanna be able to tweak every single little thing about your delay, uh, maybe other delays on the market would be more for you. But, uh, but this one is great for just putting something together, getting creative and, and going. So you can see uh, on the rest of the dial, they have uh, the few more delay sounds. There's a ping pong that is stereo. I don't have a, uh, a stereo setup going right now, so I can't really demonstrate that. But, uh, but you can check out on YouTube and, and elsewhere. You can see what these other uh, settings sound like. There's also the TP1 through 4. That is TC's tone print. So that's an app for your phone that uh, you can get more options so you can really deep dive into some of these settings uh, in the app itself and then uh, save a setting and you can actually beam it through the pickups in your guitar which is a crazy party trick that I'd, I was a little on the fence of how well that would work uh, but when I tried it, uh, it worked well. So you kind of hold the phone up and it, it, it makes this kind of noise like kind of a noise and it beams it into your, uh, into your pedal. So you can create your own, you can store four of your own, or you can uh, download patches that, uh, or presets that have been made by some really famous guitar players that, that emulate the sounds that they use. Um, I actually used a Pete Thorne setting, and that's kind of the basis of this, this, uh, this delay that I have set up here on number three, the space delay. Let me show you how the, uh, the subdivision works. So right now it's set at quarter notes, so when you tap it in, it's, you know, I tapped in right there at 85.6, so now my delays are all gonna be at 85.6. They're quarter note delays. So if you uh, move the dial, you can get different sounds. So that's a dotted quarter, quarter, quarter note triplet, which sounds kinda like this. Dotted eighth, which is famous. Uh, eighth note, triplet, eighth note, sixteenth note, and then you can get uh, multiple subdivisions in a single delay. So this one that I'm on now is dotted eighth and quarter, which uh, if you're gonna play U2, this is the, uh, the sound that you want. So uh, if you dial that in, start playing, you can get a. You can see that nails that sound. You probably wouldn't want to use that modulated delay sound. If you're doing U2, you might use the digital sound or the, uh, the analog or the analog with mod. But anyway, you can see how those subdivisions work and you can get multiple subdivisions uh, going on. Actually, you can set all three delays to be multiple subdivisions and have six delays going at the same time, which is pretty crazy. You can get kind of wild with that. But um, I'll show you real quick how you save a sound. So we've changed uh, delay number three. So now it's the 2290 with mod. It's set at uh, quarter note and dotted eighth note. And to save that, you simply step and hold. And so now that is saved at number three, so we can turn it off and play. No delay, turn it back on. 
Okay, so if we wanted to save it back to where I had it, um, we just go back to quarter note, up to the space setting, and now we're set at quarter note space. Okay, and so you can stack these delays. So on delay number two, I have a dotted eighth note delay uh, set at tape, and if you put them together, they sound like this. Which was a little bit like that other dotted eighth and quarter note, but it's a little different because I'm running them in serial, which brings me kind of to the next point. There's a serial and parallel button, and that uh, changes how the delays sort of interact with one another. So if they're in serial, one delay goes straight into the next. If they're in parallel, they sort of run uh, in parallel with one another and not interacting with one another. So right now I have them in serial, and you can hear this. So what you're hearing is because they're just delaying one another. If I would switch that to a uh, parallel, they would sound different. So what you heard there is that's what it would sound like if they were both way up in the mix. So both of those delays are running independently rather than uh, running into one another. One thing I found with guitar players, especially in like modern worship kind of styled music, we use a lot of delay and a lot of reverb. And sometimes that can be to our detriment because um, a lot of people feel like their sound sort of gets lost in a mix. Often what happens is you don't need uh, more gain or more volume to be more present in a mix. Often you just need less reverb or less delay. If you think about reverb and delay in a way of, of, of like a mixing person, uh, you can pan things left and right and that puts them left and right in the stereo field, but it's, it's really three dimensional and reverb will kind of make things come forward or backward in a mix. Uh, and delay kind of has that effect too. So if you if you feel like you're sitting way back in a mix, um, usually you might not need more drive or more uh, volume. What you might need is less reverb and delay, less modulation going on, and that'll help you sit a little forward. And if you change from serial to parallel, it might be just enough to sort of let you come a little bit forward in the mix and not get so lost um, in what's going on. It's a nice feature to have. I really like it. You can do some different things with it. Now, some of the things that, uh, that people have kind of complained about this pedal, um, one of them, the biggest one probably, is the lack of a global tap tempo. I actually can't uh, demonstrate what that is for you because I have solved that problem. I don't even think it's a problem, and I'll explain in a bit, but um, I've gotten around that and added a global tap tempo to this pedal, but I'll try and explain it really quick. Let's say I've got my my, uh, my quarter note delay in delay number three, and it's set at 90 BPM when I saved it. Then let's say I saved a dotted eighth note delay in number two at 80 BPM. So now I'm playing a song and I turn on delay number three and quarter note comes on at 90 BPM. Then I hit the tap tempo and it changes to the tempo of the song. Now, later in the song, say we hit a bridge or something or a chorus and we wanna add dotted eighth note delay turn that on and dotted eighth note delay comes on at it, the tempo that you originally saved it. So it's coming on at 80 BPM, which is probably not the tempo that you tapped in earlier. So now those two delays are out of sync, which is really simple. You just tap again and they sync up. Then if you turn delay two off, say you come out of the chorus and then you hit the chorus again and turn it back on, it comes back on out of sync at its original tempo. So you have to tap again. Um, so basically how it works is you have to tap the delay or the tempo in after every time you turn a delay on because the tempo is not global. In other words, it does not apply to delays that are not turned on. Um, the reason TC did this, it's not an oversight or it's not a, a feature that, that they just didn't put in. It's because of slapback delay. Slapback is a very fast delay. Uh, that's set at a specific millisecond that you don't ever want to change, uh, even on different tempoed songs. It's used a lot in country music, it's used on vocals a lot, and if, if the tap tempo on this unit were global, then slapback delay would be pretty much unusable because it would change anytime you tapped in a, uh, a tempo. And that's not what you want. And, temp and slapback delay is a, is a very, very widely used delay sound, so had TC put a global tap tempo on this thing, uh, they would have really alienated a lot of people that use slapback delay. 
Um, that's why they didn't put it in. Oh, some delay pedals, like the, my, t my old time factor and the timeline, for example, uh, you can turn the tap to be global or not. So you can basically turn it on and off. That would have been nice, but they did add a MIDI input. So, um, so I did have this thing in mind for people. And what I have here, this black pedal that has the tempo on it, is a Disaster Area Smart Clock, which is a MIDI time clock tap tempo. So if you just plug a MIDI cable from the Disaster Area Smart Clock into the triple delay, the tempo on the Smart Clock will globally affect all the tempos on the triple delay. So you can see there, I just tapped it in at 81. So now all these delays are set at 81, whether they're on or off. Let me do this again. Okay, so there's 75.9 BPM is what I tapped. And if I turn delay three on, you can see that it's set at 75.9. If I turn delay two on, it's set at the same thing as well. So you can have a global tap tempo on this pedal if you want it. You just have to add another piece of gear. I think it's really flexible in that regard. I actually really like this smart clock because I love that it fact the love the fact that it has a a, a BPM readout on it. Uh, I used to have a Boss DD20 that had a BPM readout on it, and I really liked it. It's especially handy if you play with uh, with click tracks that are preset tempos. Another thing about the Smart Clock is you can put it in preset mode, and so you can set preset one to be the first song tempo in your uh, set list. Say it's 80. Preset two is going to be 90, or whatever the second song is. Three would be 120. Uh, you can just set it up to follow your set list and then you just push one button and it syncs your, all your delays for the tempo of each song. You don't even have to tap, which makes it extremely flexible in my opinion and kind of gives you uh, even more of kind of a preset kind of a thing. If you like to work with presets, you can do it with this, with something like the smart clock. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is how you can really get creative with this pedal using sort of pattern type delays. So on delay one, I have one of these multiple uh, subdivisions set up and it sounds like this. Let me slow that down a little bit. All right, sounds like this. And then if you add the other delays onto it, it just sounds huge. So that was just a really simple uh, demonstration of it, but you can tell that you can just make it sound massive, like there's four of you playing guitar at the same time, all in sync, uh, all in tempo, and those can be all different delay sounds if you want them to be. So there it is, the uh, TC Electronic uh, triple delay, really great uh, sounding delay pedal, really versatile. Uh, it does three separate delays all at the same time, which is something no other delay pedal that I know of does. Um, you can add a piece of gear to it to give it that global tap tempo if that's what you want. Um, it's just really a really creative tool uh, that I think just sounds really inspiring. I've had a lot of fun uh, using this delay pedal and I have a feeling it's just gonna stay on my, on my pedal board for, uh, for quite some time. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.